Willie Harold, also known as the Yemslin Hangman, was one of the protagonists of the many curiosities that World War II left us. The fame that his story achieved is considerable, as this young man dared to lie to the German authorities and became responsible for organizing mass executions of Nazi soldiers who deserted from the army. All this despite the fact that he was also one of them. After assuming a false identity, he put himself in the eye of the storm for killing a large number of men on both sides of the conflict, taking advantage of the chaos of the last weeks of the war to carry out his bloody plan without any complications. Thus, he ended up earning the hatred of the Allies but also that of all the Nazis and was considered a traitor by Adolf Hitler himself. Today we'll tell you the most interesting details of the life and death of this famous war criminal. But before continuing and if you are a fan of firearms, we want to invite you to our new channel, World of Guns, dedicated to analyzing and exploring the most powerful, modern and unusual weapons in the world, as well as their combat history, their development and much more. You can find the link to the channel in the description and in the first comment, don't miss it and give us your support by subscribing to World of Guns. And now, let's continue with today's video. Willie Harold was born on September 11, 1925 in Saxony, a small town in East Germany. At the age of 10, he joined the Deutsches Jungvolk, the name by which the Hitler Youth Organization was known in Nazi Germany for children between the ages of 10 and 14. Through a program of outdoor activities, parades and sports, this space had the main objective of indoctrinating its young members in the principles of Nazi ideology. However, Harold was immediately expelled from that space because he refused to obey the orders he was given. Thus, he already made it clear at an early age that he was a rebel without a cause. This young man was a chimney sweep apprentice before enlisting in the army in 1943. And the year of his incorporation is not accidental. At that time, the Germans had lost the Battle of Stalingrad and were looking to make up for their losses by adding several fresh men to their troops. But how did Harold get there? Just after going through basic training with a parachute regiment in Tangermund. Once installed, this fearless soldier was sent to Italy to fight in the battles of Neptune and Monte Cassino, where he showed excellent performance. He was soon promoted to the rank of corporal and awarded the Iron Cross first class for the destruction of two British tanks on the beach at Salerno. But not everything would continue well, and before long things began to get complicated for the members of the Third Reich. As the Nazi army began to lose ground, the particular and complex character of the young soldier began to come to light. In March 1945, the unit Willie Harold was in was redeployed to Germany. In the midst of the chaos of the withdrawal of the German army, the soldier decided to separate from his detachment at the beginning of April of that year and undertook a solo journey. On the way, near Grona and Malbenthine, he found a bullet-riddled and abandoned car containing the luggage of a Luftbath captain. Without hesitating for a second, the young man donned his highly decorated uniform and assumed his new identity. It was at that precise moment that he began to introduce himself as Captain Harold of the 6th Parachute Division and took charge of gathering several equally lost soldiers around him. Thus, he would start his unusual story. Harold's group went from 4 to nearly 60 soldiers in a short period of time. All thanks to his enormous ability to lie and award himself positions and missions that did not correspond to him at all. As he walked the streets in his new uniform, soldiers who had lost his unit would approach him and end up under his orders when he presented himself as a seasoned captain with some entrusted task that would soon come to light. Finally, on April 11, 1945, Harold and his team arrived at the Iskender Furmore prison camp in the city of Papenburg, located in the Emsland district. Deserters from the German army were held there and the young soldiers saw a great opportunity there to recruit more people into his troops. He informed the German authorities in the camp that he was acting under the direct orders of Adolf Hitler and managed to deceive them. Once installed, his plan was put into action. Pretending to carry out direct orders from the Führer, he staged a military tribunal which, in the absence of written evidence, all detention camp officials endorsed. 
On April 12th, Willie Harold was already known as the Emsland Hangman due to the cruel punishments he used against the prisoners. The false captain ordered his inmates to dig a hole almost two meters deep and then mercilessly killed those present and buried them there. He also chose several prisoners to join him and even gave them uniforms and weapons. In this way, he took charge of the firing squad and murdered more than 100 inmates in just eight days. However, after an air raid by Allied troops, the place was destroyed and most of the surviving inmates managed to escape. And it was there when Harold's group began its march again. Once the camp was abandoned, Harold and his men took it upon themselves to commit various war crimes, all of them horribly cruel. They were guilty of hanging a farmer in Lear, East Frisia, who had raised the white flag of surrender. And as if this were not enough, they also murdered five Dutchmen accused of espionage, who were forced to dig their own graves and then shot. But things would soon start to get complicated for the imposter. Falling back before the Allied advance, Harold's party reached Oric and he was eventually arrested by the local commander. There, the false captain confessed to his bloody crimes and was transferred to Norden for trial by the Kriegsmarine. After the trial, he was asked to collaborate in the werewolf operation, the last hope of the Nazis against the Allies. Thus, despite his confession, they ended up facilitating his escape. Harold made his way to Wilhelmshaven, tried to hide and go back to work as a chimney sweep. But that freedom would last very little. On May 25, 1945, the young man was arrested by Royal Navy officers for stealing a piece of bread. This simple crime led to an exhaustive investigation and subsequent questioning of numerous witnesses. Thus, Harold was identified as one of the most wanted war criminals of those times. On February 1, 1946, the now famous imposter team was forced by the British occupation forces to dig up the remains of the prisoners murdered in the Iskender Furmore camp. They found a total of 195 bodies. But Harold expressed no remorse for his terrible crimes and this was not taken well by the authorities. Finally, on August 29, 1946, Harold was considered responsible for the murder of 125 people and sentenced to death by the British Military Tribunal. His premature death was the closure for a particular life story. Deemed a liar and a traitor for killing his own men, Harold was not sentenced to death by a quick shot in a firing squad, but instead was sentenced to die by guillotine. On November 14, 1946, in the Wolfenbüttel prison, Willie Harold and five other defendants were taken to the execution chamber. The rest of the condemned were pleading, each one of those men was dragged to the guillotine kicking and screaming. On the contrary, Harold did not show any trace of emotion and his execution was carried out calmly. In front of the watchful eye of several witnesses, they tied him up and placed him in the guillotine. Seconds after the executioner made the last checks, the blade slipped through his neck, ending the life of that young man of only 21 years. This was the incredible story of the Emsland Hangman. We have reached the end of our video and we want to thank you for joining us. We'll meet again in the next episode of Military History.